Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan and I'm joined today by Alistair Helm, who's the CEO of realestate.co.nz. Welcome, uh, Alistair. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Gareth. Alistair's here today to talk about realestate.co.nz's latest New Zealand monthly property report. And Alistair, this month um, you've uh, got some interesting things to say about inventory. Yeah, that's the, the lead story, I guess. We've been uh, looking at an inventory of available property for sale uh, coming down from long-term averages and somewhere around September, October last year, it dropped below that long-term average. It's continued to fall, and this month, on a seasonally adjusted basis, taken quite a, a drop down. We're sitting at 32.4 weeks, uh, compared to 41 weeks, which is the long-term average. So this is the lowest for four years. You have to go back to January 2008 to see a, a similar level of inventory, which is low. It is a shortage in the market. And, and um, how many new listings were there in March and how did it compare to February and uh, in March of 2011? Uh, just, just over 13,200 listings came on the market in March, which was down a smidgen on February. Now, normally you, you get this kind of February, March are about the same size of new listings, but as proportion to the rate of sale, these are not adequate levels of inventory coming onto the market as new listings to, de to cope with what is, seems to be an ever-increasing demand as property sales are achieving a good double-digit growth month on month, year on year, whereas listings are actually only up 8%. So you're getting this sense of divergence that not enough listings but good demand is out there in the market, leading to this sell-off of supply, which is the inventory loss. So what's your outlook if, if listings don't pick up reasonably significantly from here? Well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a difficult issue because a traditional economic situation would say if you've got uh, tight supply and strong demand, then price is going to be the factor. And we are starting to see that the asking price has tripped up another high record for this month compared to February, which was a record again. Uh, the sale price in Auckland, uh, as reported by the Real Estate Institute, is, is sitting at high levels and nationally as well is tripping up. But the other thing is it... It's a concern that you could almost have a stalling in the market. If, if buyers are really keen but feel that prices are just getting way beyond them, they may just take a step back and you could almost have a stalled market, which would be concerning because the market is, is not bubbling. It's, it's moving along nicely in volume terms and you don't really want to disrupt it. You noted another um, uh, record national asking price high. Mm. Um, and you talk about potential for stalling um, of the market because of this, um, this lack of inventory. Mm. Is there any particular price point you see is where a significant number of buyers are just going to say, no, nah, that's too high for me? I mean, is it, is it, is it easy? Is it, can, you, can you say that? <laughs> I, I think it's, it, it, it's not possible to say it because, of course, we're looking here at national 13,000 listings. You're looking at, at, at massive different areas of the country. In each area, there will be that sensitivity whereby people in a particular suburb with a particular type of house, they say, no, it's beyond. It's beyond what's real, reasonable. But at a national level, that seems to be that prices keep on going up, even though the other news stories tend to say that New Zealand prices are overpriced. They can't be if people are prepared to pay these prices. And um, you're saying that um, the market is, is, is favouring sellers, mm. uh, obviously with the dynamics you've been discussing mm. there, but there are plenty of buyers uh, knocking about, uh, first-home buyers, mm. Uh, you know, midlife buyers yep. um, and, and, and investors as well, and, and financing doesn't seem to be an issue. The banks are, uh, are happy to, to lend um, at the moment. Um, yep. So, um, I mean, what, what's what's going to happen with all these buyers um, if they can't find what they want? Well, this is leading some comp competition. It's also potentially leading to people to, to open up their catchment uh, area of where they might look or to, uh, to, to look at postponing, which could be the issue about a stalling market, potentially. But you're right, the, 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 the components of the market over the last year or so has been mainly the traditional residential buyer. Uh, indications from talking to real estate agencies, they are seeing signs of investors coming back into the market because the banks are more uh, flexible and interested in participating in this market. So that's leading to a larger buyer pool in what is still based on inventory, a seller's market. And uh, looking at some of the regions, um, I mean, Christchurch mm. is obviously uh, of a, a lot of interest at mm. the moment following the earthquakes there. What are you seeing in Christchurch at the moment? Well, again, there, the, the level of inventory is, is at all-time low, not just a four-year low, an all-time low. And, and that is really a function that the market continues to, to, to work well. Property is buying, being bought and sold. But again, the supply side is, is a limitation factor. They're sitting just on 20 weeks. 
And whilst it's not fair to look at March last year because it was a month after the earthquake, it was 52 weeks. So you had a full year's supply a year ago. It's dropped down to 20 weeks. Now, whichever way you look at it, it's dropped by about half available inventory based on rate of sales. So it's a tight market down there, and we're seeing that in asking price expectation. Again, reach a new high in Christchurch. Do you think that um, more needs to be done now, down there? I mean, the government's obviously come under a little bit of pressure mm. about uh, supply of new housing down there. Do you think um, perhaps they ought to be doing more? Um, it always takes time when it comes to, to housing. It's not something you... I mean, you can do temporary housing, but it, it's, a, it's a longer, medium-term issue. And I guess as long as the parties are getting active and they recognise the pressures in the market, then hopefully things can be done because you don't want it to be a, a constraint on the market. And you mentioned 20 weeks of inventory in Christchurch. How does that compare to the long-term uh, averages nationally? Well, the, the, the long-term average is 41, and we're sitting at 30, 32 from that point of view. Christchurch has a long-term average in the sort of 36, 38, a little bit lower than the national average. But when you compare that to 20 weeks, you can see how, how vastly removed that is. And when it dips below the long-term average, that's when we assess it being a seller's market as conversely above the long-term average a buyer's market. And obviously Auckland um, is, is another very interesting market um, mm. in the context of New Zealand. What's happening in Auckland at the moment? Well, again, not quite so severe, but definitely sitting in the seller's market. Um, inventory there is below long-term average. So it's the sense that the sellers out there, if they're interested, a great time to put your property on the market because there is a buyer demand and well-presented property is selling fast. There is no doubt that the average days to sell is coming down because property demand is out there. And uh, Wellington, um, obviously the other major city, um, we're hearing obviously news of, of um, layoffs in the, mm. in the civil service down there. What's happening in the Wellington market and is any of that flowing through yet? It is. It's noticeable actually in the asking price. Uh, the asking price has come down in Wellington, um, which probably indicates that there's, and, and the supply side, it's always kind of uh, quite a tight market, Wellington, never seems to have a lot of supply. It's hovering around the 21, 22 weeks, but the interesting is asking price. So maybe it is a case that it's a, it's a property market where there's not such a demand and people are, are trying to find the right way to, to, to put their property on the market at realistic prices. So not quite a pressured market as we're seeing in Christchurch and Auckland. And any other regions around the country in particular that stand out? Waikato. It's uh, achieved a new record high and a, a low inventory. Not an all-time low, but a significant low. So it kind of feels like we started in Auckland, we spread to the major metropolitan areas, now we're moving into the Waikato's, the Bay of Plenty's, into the central Otago's. It feels like that property market is, is like a wave moving through the country and picking up as it goes into provincial New Zealand. So in terms of the, the months uh, ahead, um, the key things to watch will be those inventory levels and yep. uh, new listings? Indeed, yeah. Um, it's still a, a, an active time in the market through the autumn. Uh, strong months of new listings expected through April and May. Uh, and even through the winter, it isn't a quiet market by any sense of imagination. But we're, we're, we're looking for that property to come onto the market to meet that demand. Thanks for that, Alistair. That's Alistair Helm, the CEO of realestate.co.nz. And I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.